I'm on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Now, as a national playwright, I've penned dozens of shows about relationships. As a filmmaker, I've documented the most beautiful committal of lovers at weddings. And as a divorcee, I know firsthand the brevity of marriage and the pain of its loss. I'm LaTerrace R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. What's up, everybody? My name is Terrace R. Whitfield. I am your host of the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm so excited because today is our first episode, and I'm launching it on such a significant day. Today is my birthday. I'm 42 years old today, and I'm so excited. And I told myself that this year I was going to launch my podcast. A lot of obstacles came in the way of me recording this podcast. Well, today when I woke up, I said, I'm not going to record it. I got this big old big old pimple on the side of my face. And I said, man, no, nah, I'm not going to record that. And then God spoke to me. He said, Latarius, you are having a podcast about being uh, transparent. I want you to start your first episode being unfiltered. Don't worry about being perfect and, you know, um, do it with the pimple on your face, basically. Because that's what love is. Love isn't perfect. Love isn't perfect daily. Love has its flaws. There will be days that you are totally in love with your mate or significant other. There will be days that you just don't like them. But will you still be able to move forward? Will you still be able to continue going forward even when things aren't so perfect? That's what this podcast is about. Being able to love even with the pimple on your face. Ah, come on, somebody. Today is such an interesting moment in this world. Why? Because we're all on quarantine. Um, This crazy virus called the coronavirus that's running rampant in the world today. And um, the thoughts that I originally had on celebrating my birthday are non-existent. I want to have a party, a karaoke game night, and um, launch my podcast live on Facebook and Instagram, but, you know, we got to be able to change uh, with life struggles and different obstacles that are thrown our way. So here we are, being intentional. One thing that I want to do in the Dear Future Wifey podcast is set the tone. This podcast will be a podcast that deals with love. We're going to discover, uncover, and recover love. I'm going to take you on my personal journey as I do those three things in my own life. Uh, I've been married before, so that means I've been divorced. Um, Had one marriage, and that ended in divorce. Uh, We're still friends this very day. I believe in living a lit life. What does that mean? Well, I affectionately coined acronym LIT for living intentionally and transparently. So that means the people that you'll have on this show will be 100 percent authentic, transparent. They may not you may not agree with everything they say, but I want them to be able to live their truth as I do the same. I'm going to be truthful. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to give you all the butt naked truth. You understand me? Y'all going to see me in ways that y'all have never seen me before on social media because uh, it's that time in my life that I truly, truly, truly uh, reveal to the world who I am and my perspective on love, what I believe about love, how I feel about love, and why I am very intentional on recovering love again for my life. I believe that marriage is a wonderful, wonderful institution. We call it an institution, and sometimes that scares people because they say an institution. One thing that's institutionalized are things that are uh, bad, but uh, I don't look at it like that. I think marriage is a beautiful union when you get married to the right person and um, you're firing on all cylinders, understand that it is a level of partnership and compromise. You can have something extremely special that very few people get an opportunity to enjoy. And that's what I'm looking forward to. So that's what the Dear Future Wifey podcast is going to talk about. I want to interview people from all different walks of life, people that have been married before, people that are married in long lasting, thriving relationships and marriages, those that are in unconventional marriages, those that may be in polyamorous relationships. That'll be interesting to talk to those individuals or even people that 
are in what we consider from the Christian faith an alternative lifestyle, those that are in gay and lesbian relationships. I want to know why they fought so hard to be equal. Well, they fought so hard for the equality of marriage that a lot of us um, straight people, heterosexual people, we don't even value marriage enough to go fight for our own marriages, let alone this culture fought for the equal rights that we been able to enjoy since the beginning of the time. So I, w- I would like to talk to um, gays and lesbians about that. Um, so I'm just really, really interested in growing and learning love from all platforms. Uh, Corinthians calls love or defines love as a lot of things. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love keeps no record of wrong. Love does not boast. It has all these amazing um definitions of what love is and so I want to really explore that I want to know if we are all enjoying those principles of love and when we go against the grain and step outside of what Corinthians defines love as does it really truly work so go on a journey with me go on a journey with me we're going to go on this journey together Um, what I think is so cool about this time in my life I have three kids. My 23-year-old daughter is engaged to be married. She was planning on getting married in May, going on a cruise, and due to the coronavirus, that just upset the whole plans. We don't know when it's going to take place this year, so y'all be in prayer about that. She's 23 years old, about to embark on what I embarked on at 28 years old. And she asked me, she was like, Dad, do you think I'm too young to get married? And I thought for a minute and I was like, you know what, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that anymore. I I try not to impose my beliefs on anybody when it comes to love, because to be honest with you, I know a lot of people that got married at very young ages that are still married to this very day or people that got married at young ages and uh, they've been married for 40, 50 years and they're in the seventies and eighties and all that good stuff. And I wonder if it was the culture back then that allowed them to stay married for so long or just their love for one another, their uncompromising love for one another. I love when I talk to people who say, The reason why we stayed married for so long is because we've always told ourselves that we would never, well, we always told each other that we would never get a divorce. They never threw up the D word uh, to each other. So I want to know, is that the answer? Or have we gone into this selfish mentality to where if we're not getting what we desire from said person that we're chunking up the deuces, heading out the door? I don't know. I'm always interested. So I would love to have an older couple. So if y'all know an older couple that would love to come on the show that have been married, let's say 40 years, at least 40 years, that would be amazing. That would be amazing to talk to those people to find out what made love last so long. But this quarantine really has me in my feelings. I'll be honest with you over the last couple of days, especially I think it was Friday night, um, a couple of nights ago, I laid down and I just felt this, Spirit of loneliness overtake me. I was laying in the bed. I said, man, I really wish I had some beautiful naked body laying next to me. Yeah, I prefer my uh, wife to be naked. I don't want you sleeping with all those clothes on. Amen, somebody. Amen. I need you to be naked and unashamed. I think that's biblical. <laughs> but I I said, you know what? I'm, I'm in my feelings right now. Like, I really want some companionship and I went to sleep early that night I think I went to sleep about 10 o'clock because I said I'm just gonna go to sleep felt like this heavy spirit of depression over the city because uh, everything is just all up in the air you don't know when you're gonna get back to work you don't know when life is gonna resume as usual and um, I don't know I just was in my feelings and then God began to speak to me Today, and it took him about two days to speak to me. And he began to break down what quarantine really is. Now, quarantine 
we're all on quarantine. We hear that all the time. And we look at quarantine as being, oh, we can't go nowhere. Uh, we got to be stuck in the house. It's like we on the sick and shut in list of, of some sorts. But um, the word quarantine is defined as a state, a period or place of isolation in which people or animals that have arrived from elsewhere or been exposed to infectious or contagious disease are placed. That's the noun. And the verb tense of it is impose isolation on a person, animal or place. In other words, put in quarantine. Hmm. So God began to speak to me this. When we go from one relationship to the next relationship, you're not allowing yourself to be placed in quarantine. Your singleness is a state of being quarantined. It's the place where how many of you have gone from a toxic relationship into another relationship and you didn't give yourself enough time to heal And you found yourself, if you were honest with yourself, you found yourself repeating those same cycles that you took from that previous relationship with this new person. And that new relationship started feeling like and looking like the last relationship that you came out of. You can't blame the new person for that unless you chose the same type of personality. But the consistent one is you. You're the only consistency between you're the common denominator between the last relationship, and the present relationship. And if you allowed God to put you in quarantine, this place of isolation, you would have been able to rid yourself from that contagious behavior, that toxic behavior, and not been able to hmm, infect the new relationship. So that's what this state of singleness is for me. The state of singleness for me is to be quarantined, to get healed from past hurts and pains, from uh, letdowns and failures, and to allow myself to heal, become whole, become new, become fresh again, to be renewed. I guarantee you that these people that are coming, I'm going to say these people, I'm going to say us, that after we come out of this quarantine from a world situation, that uh, we're going to have a new perspective on life, we're going to have a new perspective on our jobs, Uh, I love reading Facebook posts about, and you said, boss, that we couldn't work from home. It's amazing how now we can work from home. You got schools restructuring uh, education because they're allowing their kids to, and my kids, to be educated from home. And we parents are uh, teachers, yes, homeschool teachers. Uh, I digress. It's a very painful experience. But we have a new perspective, a new appreciation on teachers that now when we go to those parent conferences, that we're going to have a different level of understanding when they say that our kid was doing X, Y, Z, because we're going to be able to say, yep, that's Johnny. He was clowning when we was going through that coronavirus. So this whole season has given us a new perspective. The sad thing about it is that I'm hearing a lot of marriages are being extremely challenged because when you're so busy going through the ins and outs of life, you really don't get a chance to spend enough quality time with your mate. And now during this Rona virus and this Rona epidemic or pandemic that you're spending a lot of time around your significant other. And I've been hearing that domestic uh, domestic abuse is on the rise. I'm hearing that child abuse is on the rise. So we definitely got to be in prayer for that spirit. So we come against every demonic attack that's coming against families through domestic abuse and child abuse. We cancel that assignment right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against these households should prosper. We cancel that assignment. Peace. Be still. I speak peace into these homes right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I was heartbroken when I read a lot of these articles about the rise of domestic and child abuse. Breaks my heart. But I understand. I understand because people are hurting. And when people don't have an outlet to let out their hurt and pain and they don't understand the proper uh, protocols in order to deal with that pain, they lash out. And that's why healing 
is paramount. We have to become healed within ourselves. So no matter what atmospheres, no matter what environments we find ourselves in, that we're productive from one environment to the other. That's what the Bible says. I have to know how to abase and how to abound, how to live with and live without. See, I grew up poor, so I understand how to stretch some money. I watch my mama do it all the time. I watch her do it all the time. So I didn't get too shaken because of, um, you know, stores not having what I typically needed. You know, I remember growing up and for for dinner, we had breakfast. Because If you don't know, breakfast is cheaper or less expensive than dinner. So my mom would um, get some sausages, some breakfast sausage and cook it and cut it up and mix it with some scrambled eggs and put some toast and that was dinner. And so I learned, I learned really quickly um, how to survive when the electricity got cut off. Then um, we had a gas stove. So in order to take baths, we would boil our water, pour it in a tub or just keep it in the little red bucket that my mom got from the hospital that she worked at as an orderly and we'll just stand up in the tub and bathe. You know, it's just, and I, and I never take those moments for granted. You know, back then, I, don't even, I didn't even know that we were poor. You know, I just felt like that was the way of life. Shoot, everybody was poor in my neighborhood, so I figured that that's just the way of life. Until I watched Different Strokes. Now, Different Strokes taught me that I was poor. But before then, when I, as long as I was watching Good Times, I was all right. That's what I love about life. What I love about life is the opportunity to explore who we are, no matter what the circumstance, be able to explore who we are and and to know that we're not the same. I'm not the same 20 year old Latares and I'm not the same 30 year old Latares. You know, I'm 42 years old and I feel 42 years old. I feel like I've lived 42 years and I feel like I have the knowledge, the understanding and the wisdom of a 42-year-old, uh, if not more. I'm not going to keep you long today. I uh, just want to introduce to you who I am and let you know what to expect in our future episodes. And every episode will end with the letter that I write to my future wife. March the 29th, Dear Future Wifey, Today is March the 29th, 2020, my 42nd birthday. Currently, the world is in the midst of a serious pandemic known as the coronavirus, Dallas County has been ordered to shelter in place, so this birthday feels a little eerie. No entertainment venues open, no churches, can't sit down in a restaurant. Only essential businesses are permitted to be in operation. Essential. Now that's a powerful word. Essential is defined as absolutely necessary, extremely important. The city has decided a list of business classifications that are absolutely necessary to aid us as we transition through this tumultuous time. This includes the healthcare industry, governmental agencies, grocery stores, gas stations, shipping services, and believe it or not, <laughs> even liquor stores. My future wifey, you are essential to my life. Your presence alone will aid me through life's many unforeseen transitions. Your love is essential, your joy, in the midst of the storms is essential to our happily ever after. All chaos can break out in the world and I need you to be my calm, my place of peace, my secret place of refuge. No one will be able to make a judgment call and shut us down as being non essential to one another. Our love is essential. Our purpose is essential. We will be essential. Your future hubby. The Terrace are with you. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.